Hello, welcome back to The Great Circle, the African survival adventure available on Steam for PC. We're live. Test one, two. Okay, we're live. Uh, don't forget, you can follow The Great Circle on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, every social media. It is linked in the description below or just type in The Great Circle anywhere and it will come up. Uh, you can also join the Discord to keep up with the latest development news. And I want to thank you guys for being here. I'm going to be going over the update uh, coming up tomorrow. It's going to be available on Steam. If you already have the demo, it will automatically uh, begin downloading as long as you have that set. I'm going to go over the notes and stuff. If you have questions about uh, the update or any of the gameplay that's coming, just type it in the chat. I will answer those as I go. And it's going to be a preview for uh, update 0.1.0.9. 9. 9 is the most important one. The last update was 8, so we're moving up to 9. These are considered minor updates. Um, we're getting to the point where uh, we're going to be uh, doing more bigger updates pretty soon. Those will entail additional game modes, additional maps, additional characters, and things like that being added. And uh, the bigger up the list we go, you'll see these bigger numbers change. So, you know, you'll see the one go up to a two and everything. But most commonly, uh, nightly updates are what should have been nightly updates. Unfortunately, the last update was on February the 3rd. Although I work every day on this game, so uh, sorry for the long wait, but uh, ran into a bunch of complications, and that's just the way it goes. So, um, these uh, are going to be subject to change because I'm testing the build tonight and deploying it tomorrow. But new characters are going to be African Fish Eagle, African Wild Dog, Serval. Um, actually, the Serval was in the last update, but it, I did a little more skin work, and uh, none of these are complete as far as like uh, what I'm doing with the models and the skins, but they're good enough to be in the game now, so you're getting those three characters tomorrow. Also, new mechanics. I'm going to be able to scroll walk speed via holding shift and scroll up and down. So, obviously, there's three main speeds you know you've got your slow walk your trot and then your sprint but if you hold shift and scroll up and down it will kind of gradually left. It'll gradually increase or decrease so that you can adjust your walk speed to uh, let's say the parent that you're following or uh, the group that you're following so it'll be a little bit more of a for those of you who are using autopilot which is what this is for uh, you can you can use that to adjust the autopilot's uh, walk speed. Uh, we added Enclosure B map, so basically there's a second demo map. There's Enclosure A and Enclosure B. Um, these are considered parts of the um, um, the game's uh, story-centric park. So basically, it's got little enclosed zones. So you guys have uh, most people have seen part a so this will be a second uh, enclosure with some different foliage different uh, map features and whatnot so you're getting a new map basically uh, species based level caps is a new mechanic that means that uh, lions won't be able to reach the same level as an elephant so there is a cap about level 50 for lions elephants I think go all the way to 100 and that also scales all the way down to things like uh, fennec foxes that have a level cap of 20 and um, wildebeest I think are uh, level cap 50. Now the reason for this is uh, some people were complaining about getting killed by like a level 100 meerkat or squirrel or something like that being an elephant <laughs> you know um, and so that's that's understood if you're gonna have a uh, game where uh, the mechanic is like a level based progression uh, it becomes possible without level caps for like seemingly weak creatures that are based on real life uh, to be able to defeat stronger bigger creatures like elephants so 
level cap should deal with that. Um, that's also used as a factor for the for the AIs to determine if they should or shouldn't attack something. They'll take the levels in size into account. So you should see less unrealistic situations happening like a uh, weaker really weak animals like a little fox or something like that trying to take on something that's too big. Um, uh, tier based stat caps. So that's going to apply to things like defense, maximum attack power, things like that. That's uh, also going to be in this build. Parents of players can have two offsprings now, so it's possible for you to start the game with a uh, AI parent and then also like a little sibling. Um, although in real life, some of these creatures that you play, it wouldn't be siblings so much as like an adopted orphan, you know, that just happens to like attach to the same mother or whatever. But um, it's a little early to be uh, outlining exactly all the starting situations. So basically the main uh, story of this is the AI can now handle having the player for a baby and an AI baby. So two in the uh, player's group starting out. It's possible. You don't always get it, but it's possible to have it. Uh, parents retrieve offspring that wander too far. So basically they're not going to let you go too far out of their sight. They're going to come looking for you. Uh, parents will keep pace with the range of the offspring stats, so they won't outpace you too much. Um, so if you have a uh, giraffe or something like that, giraffes can go pretty quick, uh, like up to 43 miles per hour, I believe. Um, babies can't really keep up with the uh, parents' trot speed, so now it's going to be if your level is too low then they're going to be reducing their speed so that it's within the range of what you can actually keep up with let's say if you started sprinting ran out of stamina and started slow walking again they would not be able to walk fast enough for you to be getting lost completely behind them um parents will respond to distress calls by players so you got one through four calls available to uh, your character and that will be your number one through four on the top of your keyboard or your number keypad to the right for those of you who have that laptop same thing one through four and uh, number four is going to be your distress call now if you forget what keys go to what calls on the screen on the hud left side of the screen it has the number of calls and what each number represents so there's the little cheat sheet just as a part of the HUD for right now. Um, companions, they're basically the offspring that are with you. So you, if you have a sibling, uh, a young creature with you, if you start the game off like that, they're considered companions. So the companion type animal may choose to follow the player or parent. So it could switch between you and the parent, but it could just decide to follow you for a while. Animals with physi uh, that physically look will physically look in the direction of their herd to determine if they are too far from the group. So it won't be uh, like they are in their head figuring out, oh, I'm too far, now I'm just going to start walking towards the group. They're going to look around first, and this is a much more realistic looking uh, thing that will happen in the world. Uh, player instincts pick up the alert calls for danger. So now when you hear guinea fowls or crows do alert calls, and other alert type animals in the future that have the alert call ability to alert other animals that they see predators um, will be able to trigger in your instincts on the bottom left hand side it'll say danger just in case you just so happen to be playing the music loud or you have the volume down or whatever and um, maybe I don't know how you might be playing the game but you'll see on the left side the big red danger sign pop up if your animal hears an alert call in, in, in range. Um, animals not accepted by a group leader will lurk on the outside of the group. So they'll basically hang back. They'll be the stragglers. You'll see those creatures um, basically if the leader rejects or has not accepted yet. Those creatures want to be with the group but they will be a further away just kind of lurking on the outside. Uh, so you'll see those uh, types of animals, and that's an ex that's an expansion of the AI's intelligence, um, the AI's um, uh, social interaction 
uh, routines and, and algorithm to where they actually can accept and reject other creatures, including the player, but right now this is focused on just a within AI to AI interactions. Um, oh yeah, we added Unreal Engine credit to the intro when you start the game up, so it'll, it'll show the thing. Um, that's like a legal thing for those of you who don't know. People who use that engine have to do that um, at some point when their game is available on Steam. Technically, I don't have to do it yet. I'm just getting it out of the way. So you'll see, you may notice that. Um, we added hiding in bush behavior to some prey animals. Uh, this needs some tweaking. That's why it's only applied to some prey animals. What they generally will do first right now, I'm only telling you this so that you can kind of see if it's working or not correctly and just kind of give some feedback on that. But uh, let's say you find an African hare, like a rabbit or something, and it runs away from you. After it's done running, it should go for a bush. Um, the tweaking is, we don't know if it's going to know all the bushes that it can run into, and, and the bush is big enough to hide its body into yet, but the thing that is correct is, we are detecting the right bush, so we just got to add some more stuff to that to make it more realistic um, so that you know you get the right size bush that you hide in you're not trying to hide if they're already in plain sight that kind of thing so that's going to be um, more fun for for hunting um, let's go down to adjustments these are going to be smaller changes, but uh, we changed the survival demo to animal survival demo. Um, that's because I added uh, a few other game modes, such as uh, human survival, uh, where you get to play the human character. Um, but I wanted to basically section this off to just show... Uh, I had mentioned that animal's survival is actually a smaller... It's going to be a smaller part of the game because there's going to be much more content than just that so you're going to see on the on the main menu of the game uh human survival safari animal survival and you'll see like there's a lot more content than just this so um also we improved when i improved the crow hops and walking physics so you're going to see the crow come close to you to see if there's bugs and you know if there are none he'll just kind of hop away but he looks more like a crow now so that will be interesting crows are alert creatures so good idea to have them around if you're a herbivore it helps you look out for predators and things like that um, added instincts for most animals to prefer to nest away from water sources so one issue was um, some of those AIs were just putting their nests right there on the water and that doesn't make any sense uh, crocs are gonna be in the water uh, it's trafficked frequently by predator animals like lions or hyenas and things so it doesn't make sense for the nest to be close to water so when they go to their nest uh behavior they're going to make sure they're not close to water sources first and then they're going to go and move away if they are too close to a water source and then nest so that has now been added to the code um We've added a size cap for some predators to avoid prey that is too big, so that way you don't have the monitor lizards going after elephants, like was uh, like with the example of the meerkat or whatever it was that killed the elephant player. Um, added a new HUD icon for overheating, so you're gonna see the status bar to the bottom of the screen, just over the uh, the level uh, bar. So if you're poisoned, it's going to be down there, it's this little hot bar with all the status icons. If you've been burned, it's going to be down there. If you've got a bone break, it's going to be down there. I've added a bunch of new icons for all those kinds of things. So there's going to be ticks, grooming, overheating, bone break, all those icons have been added there. Added a park ranger in human survival mode to main menu. So those are two other game modes. Um, added new African gray parrot social calls. Added the Hadida, Hadida Ibis social calls. Um, added more factors to animal uh, leader selection, so it'll take more things into account like level, size, health, territory, that kind of thing. Returned fight, flight control to basic version 1. So if you got to play the uh, Secretary Bird uh, early, you know it flies a little differently today than before. 
before, but there were some good things about the old system. Basically, remove uh, the new the update to the system feels a lot more like the first uh, basic version. So uh, that's the change there. That's because it was better with turning, and uh, it's going to be much better with ascents and descents and dive bombs for uh, certain bird creatures. So we're gonna go back to that. Uh, kind of architecture for the uh, flight physics and stuff and uh, I think it'll be more fun to control the birds like that um, so improve the blood pooling after player death improve the herding behaviors um, so creatures will be looking like they herd better than before like before you got some stragglers some some just kind of darting off in other directions uh, ignoring herd behaviors where they're stampeding away, there's danger. They don't, they didn't pay attention before. Now they're that's been improved. It's not quite where it needs to be just yet. Uh, where it needs to be is uh, like a true to life one to one situation where if a uh, gazelle sees a bunch of gazelles running, that should automatically trigger it to want to run because it thinks there's danger nearby. So we're we're getting there, almost there. Uh, improve the animal's navigation system so they should have an easier time avoiding uh, big obstacles like uh, trees that they can't walk through. Like some bushes look like trees, but there are or some trees look like bushes, but they're actually trees and they're meant to block paths. Uh, that was kind of a problem, so I upgraded the navigation system there, so that should be less of a problem. However, I don't have full confidence in the new navigation yet, so what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and turn the tree collision off so that even if they try to walk through something, it won't stop them. Or now, until I uh, go back and work on that navigation again. Animal's ability to detect water edge is improved. Um, so they're going to be right at the edge of the water, not walking too much into it. Um, remove the shine from pangolin scales. So it looks more real and less like plastic. Uh, set overheating damage to 10%. So now you don't go all the way down to 1% of your health if you get overheated. Um, various minor performance improvements. There are a bunch of fixes. Uh, let me see if I can just call out the most important ones. But uh, fix hyenas not making eye contact with targets. Fix birds getting too close to players for ticks. So, like, the crows would come in for a tick and they get stepped on and killed. So, fix that. Uh, cinematic and player HUD not showing automatically after waking up. Fix that. So, giraffes and crows suspended too high up the ground. Fix that. Um, and fix the sizes with overgrown babies and ostriches. I think I got the ostriches. That's still a complicated issue. I know it looks silly that out of all the creatures running around, why is the ostrich sun, like giant out of everything and like the size is perfect for the other ones but not that? It's a complicated answer, but it has to do with the, the system of uh, growth applied to the ostrich versus, and it's not applied to any other creature. So hopefully that's fixed. Um, if not, just say it in the Discord and uh, I'll, I'll continue working. Um, where are we at? Uh, over uh, servo not being able to fix, or uh, not being able to sit. Took care of that. Uh, fix friendly emote to call. Not working for play all playable creatures. So basically, every creature will be able to press the two. You should see the hearts go up right now. Um, fix twelve uh, bird species missing scent info. And fix photo mode opening twice on itself when not exited properly. So um, some people have accidentally opened photo mode twice by uh, opening it with P. And then instead of clicking exit to close it, they, they press P again and it opens again. Well, I mean, there's an argument that, you know, P should have never triggered it to open twice anyways. But this is a game in development, so it just hadn't been developed yet. So now if you press P, it'll close it. Uh, press P to open, press P to close it. If you open it, you can close it by pressing the escape button as well. That's the pause. So I've uh, closed that off, so it shouldn't double open. Um, 
It still opens over exposed, so you do need to go to effects and then take the exposure down to start getting good pictures. Um, but I'm going to make it eventually open on the correct exposure uh, by default later on. That'll be the next step. Um, let's see. For now, I'm going to go ahead and skip the rest of the fixes because uh, that list is going to grow by the time the uh, next version is exported on the other computer over there and uploaded to Steam. So I'll probably test on that computer. I'll make some final changes. I'll re-export re it again and then we'll upload to Steam for tomorrow. Um, known issues and stuff that are still going to be there are going to be walking over small rocks. Could you, oh, I do apologize for this, but this is a kind of a serious thing that can't be fixed just yet, but I will very soon. But basically, um, your camera gets off kilter. If you walk over like a rock the wrong way or too quickly, it'll, the camera will adjust because you changed uh, the angle of the animal. But sometimes if you get off the rock too quickly, it doesn't adjust back flat when you get back on the flat land. It's like still tilted. And honestly, the only way to fix that is either to walk back over that same rock the right way or uh, just restart the game. So, and I never want people to have to restart the game in order to fix an adjustment like that. So what I'm working on is an automatic uh, recentering of the camera. A little harder to do than you, might, than you might think, only because of the system I have in place. But I will have that working. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing will be uh, walking into deep water will still cause a fatal error. So stay out of deep water. You can still go to water, drink. Uh, that should be enough to cool you down to as far as like overheating. But don't try to swim. Uh, trying to swim will crash the game. Uh, it's supposed to crash the game. Um, it's because there's a hole in the code there and what's going to replace it will be putting in the hippos and like basically there's a the game the game is almost going to be like a separate like a like a it's going to be like crossing in from one game into another game just by going in and out of deep water it's going to be like a different game underwater versus out of water this is what i'm thinking um but anyways it, it crashes because there's there's nothing there to read and it's not as easy as one might think uh, for the method that I've chosen to just make it so that you just walk underwater. So, chosen to just leave it as a fatal error that will happen, uh, and you know, you can easily avoid that just by not going into deep water or water that's too, too deep to walk in. Uh, and the last thing is built in photo mode picks, not saving in the default photos folder. So, you want to check the uh, local app data. I know that's a pain, but you could just copy and paste this right here and put it in your put it in your um, your Windows Explorer navigation bar. Like that. Good copy paste that. It should should take you directly to it. But um yeah. Maybe it works for you. I've gotten mixed answers on that, and it's still a little tricky with the engine modifications that I did. That's kind of why it's doing that. But uh, you can also use Steam's uh, built-in screenshot capture with F12. You can also use NVIDIA Ansel for those of you who have NVIDIA graphics cards. Um, and whatever you set your hotkeys or your shortcut uh, keyboard shortcuts for the um, photo mode in Ansel, you just do that. And if you don't know what that is, then you know just Google Nvidia Ansel if you have a uh, Nvidia G uh, Nvidia graphics card, and uh, you'll see it's very easy to use the built-in photo capture mode. And that's a very good thing because it lets you capture really high resolution screenshots. Um, Upcoming developments is uh, I'm doing more stuff with the combat. The combat actually is improved, uh, so it is going to be um, a nice, a decent feeling fight, I think, at the moment uh, when a creature decides to hunt you or if it tries to fight you. But I'm going to add things um, in the next update that will have to do with like territorial aggression, parental aggression, more, more things like that. 
actually the parental aggression starts now uh, if there's a um, if there's a predator too close to a baby elephant uh, your parents should react uh, aggressively and I'm expanding uh, the behaviors to be not just run in and attack to like throw the head to try to intimidate intimidate code is now in so they'll try to intimidate if that doesn't work then they can decide to do something else so there's like a step-by-step -step thing but I'm doing a, I'm still there's still a lot more to do with the uh, combat it is connected to all basically all other um, AI systems such as the eye contact system such as the eye uh, perception system and the hearing and things like that all of that plays into it um, so that if a fight's happening and they're targeting one thing I want them to be able to react to the lion that's coming in from the left side to to attack as well and not just stay focused here like a robot and get attacked from the side I also want the attackers uh, the things that are hunting something to, to notice that uh, a creature with tusk or horns is now turned towards them and instead of going in for that attack maybe they turn around and become the bait and they, but I want them to be able to uh, react to the changing situation of well now the creatures looking at me so now I need to do something or else I'm gonna take damage. Uh, and for the other animals to recognize now there's an opportunity because it's turned its back on us so uh, new developments other than that uh, we'll skip down into um, ox pecker birds we'll see better on the body animations so you're actually gonna get the ox peckers right now it's just the crows and sparrows but we're gonna get ox peckers really soon Ethiopian wolf African fish eagle kudu and Africa oh actually that one's already in African wild dog is in but I just gotta finish the skin the skins not really done but I put it in anyway so I think it's decent enough um, yeah, so that's a preview for the uh, point one, point zero, point nine, or point nine. So I'm just going to do a couple more tasks because I wanted to just fill an hour and it looks like I got 20 minutes left. So I'm going to do that. And if you have questions about the gameplay um, or anything that's coming in the game, just ask that in the chat. I'll be happy to answer that. But anyways, thanks for joining.